Why is it that no matter what you do, you just can't seem to finish your game? The secret to finishing your game is number one, staying motivated. Number two, getting disciplined. Number three, subscribing to this channel. But first, a word to make matters worse, all that motivational advice out there just doesn't seem to change anything. Or worse, you end up feeling terrible for struggling to actually stick to any of it. I've had this problem for years, but since releasing my first game, I've come to realize that there is actually one thing that will not only get your first game released way sooner than you expected, but also instantly kickstart your career as a game developer. And that one thing is make a game that you can actually finish. Seriously, make a game that you can actually finish? Isn't that a little redundant? But it's actually true because the biggest reason why game developers don't finish their games is that they aren't approaching their game with the right perspective, or in this case, the right lens. Usually when game developers start out, they look at their game from super close up. They have this dream idea, but they approach it from a narrow perspective, working on only one feature at a time, not realizing that they're actually looking at a tiny piece of a massive machine. And before you know it, it will destroy you. Instead, we have to switch to a wide lens so that you can see the bigger picture and map out a specific strategy to tackle this thing. And to do this, we need to make a plan. So I'm going to use a Top Gun inspired game that I started working on as an example for this video. Here are my overall goals for the game, all the features it needs and how long I want to spend on making this game. Assuming it'll take one month. And over here, I wrote what I need to get done this week. I like to go all the way down to an hourly schedule. And I also noted all the marketing beats I'll have to hit if I was actually going to release this. Now at this point, you're probably thinking that's great and all, but how do you actually know how how long you'll need and how long each task will take if you've never made a game before. Well, believe it or not, there's really only one way to find out. Part of it is making super small games, which I've talked about before, but there is another very important aspect to this that often gets overlooked, and without this, you might just end up wasting your time. When you make your first small game, pick something super simple to clone like Flappy Bird or Pong and find out exactly how many hours you'll have free over the weekend to work on it. So I've got jujitsu in the morning, then I'm free all day, but then on Sunday there's mass and family stuff, so I'd give myself 10 hours, 7 on Saturday, and three on Friday evening, and then leave Sunday free. Before you sit down to work, start a timer. Write down exactly how much time you spend on every small goal, including planning, research, tutorials, programming, level design. Write everything down. And then once those 10 hours are up, whether the game is done or not, repeat the whole process again. When you find the time, making the game smaller and smaller until you actually release one, as long as it takes. This is the best way to measure your progress and will allow you to reliably scope your more serious projects. All right, we've got a bit of a problem. So I've just been working on the fighter jet controls for like two hours and I'm nowhere near done. I keep having bugs, so this one might take me literally the whole weekend. Is it possible that it could actually cost me more money to make these controls myself than to buy an asset that already does that? How can this be? They say that a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, they've been saying that for 310 years, and that's a long time. But time is money, and that's actually a more recent saying. The real question for our purposes is how much money are you spending while making your game with respect to how much time you spend? What? Let me put it another way. Let's say you end up making $10,000 on your game. And let's say that over six months, you put about 250 hours of work into it. That basically means that you made $40 an hour. So if it takes you 10 hours to implement a feature that costs $40 on the asset store, you effectively spent $400 on it by using a lot more time than you'd need to. Now, of course, you won't know exactly how much your game will make. And if you're making a game for free, you might be a bit more limited here. But it's still an important principle to consider as you get deeper into this. Anyways, I did end up using the asset and it didn't take me very long to set it up with the F-18 model. Sometimes assets aren't going to work out of the box though, you often need to customize them to fit your game's art style or mechanics, so it's not like this completely eliminates the workload. And that brings me back to something else, something really important, something that you don't see most devlogging YouTubers doing, that if you don't do will almost certainly mean that you will never finish your game. I changed the story about three different times. And so I set out on the arduous journey of redesigning the game's major functionality. And that's why I started sprinkling in some creative 2D indie game craziness. Can you guess what it is? I should have done this before I wrote my weekly goals out because it turns out that I actually missed some really important features. I totally forgot about the menu and I realized that I'm going to need a completely new enemy AI system for the enemy fighter jets. So I had to sit down and rewrite all the logic that they're supposed to use. This can seriously be a lot of work, believe me, I get that, but don't worry because if you're having trouble keeping track of all this info, I actually put together a PDF summarizing pretty much everything I've ever learned about solo game dev, which you can get down in the description totally free. So what we just talked about is the basics of a design design document. But how detailed do these actually need to be? Well, I want to say it's up to you, and on one hand that's true, it's up to you if you're trying to work on a game that you hope to finish and make money with, or if you just want to have fun doing game dev as a hobby. Both are great, but on this channel, we focus on trying to go full time as game developers, so I have to be completely honest here. Whenever I watch devlogs of cool projects that solo developers are working on, I almost always question whether they will actually finish, because you see so many series out there that get stuck on episode 25 or whatever, and you never see it again, and these devlogs have often been running 
running for years. For games that seem like they should take much less time to finish. In every video, you hear these guys talking about changing their plans or getting better ideas from viewers, which is all great, but I've been there. I've remade Air Obscure like three times, and it only really got done when I truly understood what the game was about and what my goals for the project actually were. So, with my design document written out, I got back to work, but as I continued to buy more assets and spend more time on the game, I realized pretty quickly that there was another thing that I overlooked because my spending could easily get out of control. Yeah, this needs some attention. I touched on this earlier, but obviously just like you need a design document to detail what you need to put into your game, you also need some way of tracking your budget. Hopefully you're already doing that for your hourly rate, so now let's figure out exactly how much you need to spend on the game. Let's keep our $10,000 figure from earlier, but this isn't actually how much money you gain. Your total net gain is your earnings minus your budget. So let's say that I want to gain $10,000 and my budget is $2,000. That means I need to earn at least $2,000 to break even and earn $12,000 to reach my my revenue goal. <laughs> Easier said than done. But our budgets are probably going to be really small starting out, so how much money do you actually need to make a game? Well, the bare minimum is $100 US because that's how much a Steam page costs, but you get this back if you make $1,000 on your game. The number one most important thing to spend money on is the capsule art, because to even stand a chance against the games that your thumbnail will appear next to, it has to be striking, outstanding, and beautiful. It's not that different from YouTube thumbnails, actually. This will run you anywhere from $200 to $1,000. And as I mentioned earlier, you have to factor in the assets you plan to buy, the art you'll be paying for, and any professionals you want to commission, either on Fiverr or wherever else, which is totally okay to do. This is all okay so long as you plan your budget and stick with it. But even with all of this, something was still missing because even when I did all this for my first game, all this planning and organization, there was still a super crucial thing that I failed to do that caused my game to basically flop. Because even though all these things are crucial to getting your game finished, you still have one major hurdle to overcome, which is actually making all that money you spent back. And hopefully you have enough extra to make your next game. So to make sure that your game will actually succeed on release, you should absolutely check out this next video to learn the best strategies for marketing your game, even if you're only getting started. And by the way, if you don't have to, don't make your game alone. If you're really serious about game dev, you can actually book an hour call with me for personalized advice and I'd love to help you kickstart your journey. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.